Everybody, welcome back to Wicked Good Sports. This is Power Plane. We're joined as always by Chris Uminski. Chris, how are you doing? Um, well, overall, pretty good. But if I'm going to be talking about the Bruins, then uh, I've been better. Yeah, so this episode, we will be covering what has been going on with the Bruins in free agency. And it's not a lot from uh, from what you're telling me at the top before we started recording. So I guess it won't be a long episode. We'll see. Uh, or less, you have stuff to fill in in terms of being, you know, upset. But uh, yeah, the floor is yours, Chris. What do you think about the Bruins free agency moves thus far? Um, so number one, I'm real sad because we... We last episode we talked about Taylor Hall getting traded out. No more Nick Felino either. Dmitry Orlov's gone. Let all these guys go. And the whole point of letting all these guys go is so that we could hold on to one person, one player, and that is Tyler Bertuzzi. And yeah, I feel like we talked about it, and you're like, "This will all be fine as long as we sign Tyler Bertuzzi." And it was like two days later, didn't happen. <laughs> Yeah, and just like Tyler Bertuzzi, today I am wearing a Toronto Maple Leafs jersey. I am shocked you own one, considering your disdain for uh, the Maple Leafs. Perhaps it's an ironic thing, but it worked out well for this. Uh, it's I I'm wear I'm wearing this because I'm upset with the Bruins right now. And understandable. like Tyler Bertuzzi, like I would have. In an ideal world, he would have stayed. It seemed like he was happy here. Um, but I guess at the end of the day, it was him who wanted to leave. But it, there's only one other team that I would have been more mad about him going to than Toronto, and that would have been Montreal. Yeah, so I guess we'll take uh, what we can get there, but... Uh... What happened here? Why why do you want to leave Boston? What's the word money. on the street? Money. Money. I, money. I, he, want, he wanted more money than we were willing to pay. And I think frankly, he wanted he's getting way overpaid in in Toronto. All right. So with that said, are you especially upset given how it played out? Yes. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Still, what would you have wanted them to overpay, I guess? Um, I know, like, it's not even that I'm upset with Don Sweeney. Don, Sweeney, this is not Don Sweeney's fault. The more I look into it, it's it's more him wanting. He was he was asking more than what he, for more than what he is worth. I think, and that being said, he is worth a lot. Right. So, you know, it, it's hard there. Um, for, it's what, hard. for what he took to go to Toronto. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's a good move for the Maple Leafs to overpay him? Um, I don't know. We'll see. I, me as a Leafs hater, I hate him on the Leafs, but that's also because I loved him on the Bruins and he plays Bruins style hockey. And I don't want to play against guys that have Bruins style players. Right. That makes sense. That makes sense. Well, other than that, uh, what else we got for the Burns free agency so far? Uh, so I mentioned all these guys, all these guys leaving. They did make a couple of signings. Um, one of them I'm very happy about. That we got a uh, James Van Riemsdyk in free in free agency. He's been he's been pretty good. Um, I wouldn't say he's the same guy that he that he was, but he's still I'd say like like the tail end of his prime. So what do you think he's going to bring to the Bruins this next season? Um, veteran leadership. I think every signing that the Bruins have made so far, I think has been in anticipation of Patrice Bergeron leaving and David Krejci leaving. Um, so you see Van Riemsdyk come in, and he's filling in on D, which makes sense considering some of the players that we lost. Um, but then... Man, I'm thrilled about I'm th- I'm thrilled, man. There's there's one guy who I know all of Bruins Nation is very happy to see. Yes, a reunion of sorts. Yes, and that and that is my boy Milan Lucic. It's like it's 2011 all over again. 
Yes, he's back. Uh, what what does he bring to the Bruins? It's been a minute. It's been a little bit since he's been on the team. So, in you know, I don't want to say he's so old or anything now, but he's older. He's older than he was certainly. He's, so uh, he's thirty. He's thirty five. Uh, right. Yeah. So that's up there. It's very clear based on his social media alone that he signed with the Bruins. He's on a one year deal with the purpose of retiring a Bruin. All right, so you gotta love that from yeah. As a fan, I love that. Um, as far as what he's going to bring to the team, I think it's more veteran leadership. Considering again, we're probably losing Patrice Bergeron this year. Um, he's still he's still a presence on the ice. Like he doesn't suck, but he's definitely not who he was ten years ago. Uh, who who of us are? Let's be honest. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, so exciting to see him back, and like you said, excited for one last ride here uh, with the yes. Bruins. Uh, anything else for the Bruins free agency before we get into a a wild story? Um, I think that's it for Bruins free agency for right now. Um, right. I'm hoping for some good news soon. Hopefully soon, yeah. So. What isn't good news, especially if you're an Arizona Coyotes fan, and not that we ever have any good news for, for the Coyotes, it seems, um, there was an arrest. Do you want to kind of tell everyone about what happened here? Yeah, to quote the uh, the sports guy on the Arizona local news video that I watched last night, it's always something with this team. It really is. I mean, we... Uh, we aren't as in depth as I'm sure he is being, you know, an Arizona sports person. But I feel like we've we've been bringing them up a lot for for a primarily Bruins focused show. Yeah, and I feel like honest. Yeah, they're probably the team we talk about like the second most amount. Yeah, it's it's them, <laughs> and then the Whalers, then actual other teams. <laughs> um. But yeah, he, I don't know the full context of how this all started, but I guess a couple of weeks ago, Alex Galchenyuk was rather intoxicated and driving in Scottsdale, Arizona, hit and hit something and then drove off. He gets pulled over and he basically was like fighting the cop and I don't have the article right in front of me, so I can't even say exactly what it is that he said but he made implications like he's a first of all he's from russia that's very important for this story right like oh i know people in moscow um i'll have them come after you and your family i'll eliminate your bloodline or something yeah, like yeah yeah he said i'll eliminate your bloodline which is wild <laughs> um yeah pretty much everything you don't want to do uh in a police interaction he did Especially in a place like Arizona. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is just such a crazy story. And it was just like, like you shared it with me and I was like, oh, he, he got arrested. Okay. Then I was like, oh my God. He just like kept reading it. I was like, Jesus Christ, this guy. And, and it's not even like you hear about stories like this coming out of the NHL a lot. No, I mean, you barely hear about this kind of a thing ever. Who, who threatens to kill cops? Right. Yeah. Like, like you hear about like athletes getting arrested and you think, oh, like it's probably like somebody on the Raiders. <laughs> right. And even uh, if like he had just gotten arrested, like, oh, he was drunk and he was driving. It's like, that's bad. I'm yeah. not surprised that an athlete would get arrested for that. But this is like, yeah, like, it's not totally so unheard of athletes to have police interactions like this. But mm -hmm. like, this is like, whoa. Yeah, so and, <laughs> he just resigned with with uh, he, the Coyotes. So that, right? That's the craziest part about this is he just resigned with the Coyotes, and this happens, and they like I think it was like three days ago they terminated his contract. Yeah, I mean, what 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 else can you really do? You know, like this is a team that's already fighting for its life to stay where they are. And the last thing they need is this kind of PR coming out of their players. <laughs> yeah, no, it's crazy. It's, it's really bad. Um, you know, hopefully he 
gets the help he needs i guess i don't know but this is just a insane story is he is he maybe done in the nhl oh oh oh, yeah in the nhl you don't come back from things like this yeah so i saw like you know there's always the meme like when someone plays poorly or screws up in the nba it's you know get ready to go to china uh this is like you know someone's just like get ready to go to the khl He's and yeah, he's right. And honestly, that's probably what's going to happen because he's going to get deported back to Russia. <laughs> yeah. So huge mistake. Not good. Crazy story. Yeah. Um, I don't think we have much more to say to say on it. Just just a wild time. Um, yeah. Other than that, Chris, anything else you want to talk about before we get on out of here? Uh, nope. I think that's it. Best places to find me are on t- Still on Twitter, uh, um, at Chris underscore Uminski, and then on twi- TikTok at Chris Uminski. Yes, so follow him there. Follow me on Twitter at the Fake Mar and the CMA RR. I feel like we missed the short window where it was like follow on Threads. I don't, I don't know if Threads is going to take off just from what I've yeah. been seeing on there. So you can follow me on Threads. I'm pretty sure it's the same, the Fake Bmar, but uh, I don't really use it that much. Uh, still. Still in the mud of Twitter, though. So follow me there. Follow the channel pretty much everywhere where you get sports. And other than that, Chris, thank you so much for your time. Whoever wins the uh, the Elon versus Zuck fight, uh, that's the platform that we're going to use. Yes. So once once that happens, we'll, we'll all, you know, delete or uninstall based on that. Excellent. Right. Yeah. So, um, right. yeah th- thanks for listening, everybody. And we'll see you in the next one.